Good morning, Facebook Live. Coming to you live from MCOR Automotive here in Lutz, Florida on uh, August the 2nd. And want to go over a few things we got going in the shop. We're going to come to you in the middle of the week because there's some pretty cool stuff to take a look at that we're in the process of right now. And uh, give us any questions you got while we're filming if you'd like. We'll try to answer them live. If not, you can hit us up later on or message us like always. So let's get started here. I'm going to walk over here and uh, go over a couple of things. Some cool stuff you haven't seen before. So let's check it out. Hey, Roddy, we got Facebook Live on here. Hello, Facebook Live. Why don't you tell them what you're doing on this truck, something unique that we have not showed our live viewers yet. I think this is pretty cool. Well, basically, this is a base model work truck. Didn't come with any power locks, no power door or windows. So what we're adding is power locks and power windows, which this is the actual motor that we'll be putting on here. Okay. And if you look at the other side, it's already installed. But basically, it just uses the window crank. You add a couple of gears to it, mounts to this, mounts to the door, powers up. Okay, so something cool. We're basically taking a factory bone stock kind of a truck here that did not come with power windows and locks, and we're adding a power window, power lock kit to it. We use a spall equipment. They're, it's made in Italy. It's some of the top of the line stuff. It meets or exceeds, um, you know, manufacturer's specs on stuff. Um, and it can outlast even like what a factory actuator would. So just because you bought a vehicle that didn't have the power locks on it or the power windows on it doesn't mean that MCOR can't convert it for you. So it's pretty cool. So like he showed, this is a factory window crank right here. You got the handle close by, Roddy? So I can show uh, yeah. the handle real quick. So this is where the factory window crank would go. If you take a look at that, it slides over top of it. When you rotate it, it brings your window up and down, obviously, right? So what we do is take everything apart here, and then this motor assembly that he's working with right here, get in your way for a second here, bud. This is the gearing that fits over top of it, and this is the motor that operates it. And that motor will then, will wire all that up, and it'll, it'll sit over top of that crank, and it'll turn it into a power window. So it's pretty slick when it's all said and done. We're also converting it to power door locks. This one does not have a power door lock in it currently. So as you can see, it's just a manual deal. You got to lift up and down by hand. There's no door lock actuator in there. I'm going to take you around to the other side and show you what happens and how we add power door locks to a vehicle. And I'll show you a finished window motor that he's got done here. So this window motor is already mounted. You can see it here in the location and it runs through cables. It sits over top of that crank, so no longer the window, and he's got it hooked to a drill battery to show you how it works, so check this out. So we'll reverse polarity and drop this window now. And you can watch this motor spinning and spinning this crank. You can see this crank spin around. That's a set screw that holds it all straight. And there you go. So now this has been converted over to power windows. As far as the power lock goes, same, thing. same type thing. You'll see when he, this is where it's tied in. So now we got power lock. So reverse the polarity and knock the switch up, knock the lock up. There you go. So now you have power lock. So this is pretty slick. Behind here is a small actuator in this door. And I may be able to, there we go. You can kind of see it. And that actuator goes up and down. And then it's tied in up here with the factory rod and that's how we knock them up and down now he'll mount a set of switches we have factory style pods you have the pods out or anything yet have you i'll tell i'll show you how the uh how it looks it's a nice factory style setup these are the pods for the switches that'll get mounted in the doors so look good when it's all complete and then uh factory style switches going on it also I can show you how these fit in here. Pretty slick when it's all said and done. So it, it's a nice look. It's not exactly factory, but it's as close as you're going to get with, uh, without having to replace door panels and all that. Real nice setup. Thank you, Roddy. Appreciate it. Sure. This is all the wiring and everything that goes in. Probably can't see much of it, but it is, it is a ton of wiring in here. Okay, so the locks we're going to do with the Viper 3305V. It's going to get an alarm system on it, so it'll operate with the remotes. This is a two-way setup that we're putting on here. And what this two-way setup does, it's great for people that live in apartments or anything like that. 
Um, this will give you feedback and let you know when your alarm has uh, been set off. This one's a, an entry level way to do it, pretty cheap way to do it. Um, if you're within usually a quarter mile to a half mile range, something like that, um, and somebody breaks in, say you're having lunch at a restaurant or you live in an apartment and uh, somebody breaks into your vehicle, you'll know it. This, this alarm system will give you feedback and let you know that on the Viper. So that's how we're going to operate the power locks on this. And power windows will be operated with a switch. Pretty, pretty slick setup. Thank you, Roddy. Appreciate it, bud. And then on this one, we got Wade over here working on a Chevy. So we're replacing an older, an older installed door lock actuator. This is a repair. So this one had had these door lock actuators installed a long time ago, and uh, basically this actuator will is put in. This kind of shows you what was behind the door panel on the other one. And then, there you go. So this rod will tie in, and it'll go back and forth, and it'll pull that lock. So even though it's a side-mounted lock on a Chevy, it goes side to side instead of up and down like the Ford, we can still do the conversion on it, and that's what's being done on that vehicle. Thank you, Wade. I appreciate it. I am going to walk over here. I'm going to hit up our uh, accessories department over here. Justin's hard at work on another project Jeep that we've got going on. I showed you the other one that we had before. I'm going to switch over and talk to Justin here for a couple minutes. Hey Justin, we got Facebook Live here. Why don't you let them know what you got going on? Good morning, Matt. Good morning, Facebook. we got another Jeep in here. Nice Rubicon. We're going to be doing a bunch of Rhino on it. We, you can see we've already got the fenders removed. We've got the rock sliders in the side removed. We're going to be doing the bumper. We're going to be doing the rear bumper, the tire carrier, and the lights. The light brackets up on the, on the windshield there. So we'll have it... Uh, have a nice touch of rhino all around it and we'll make it tough and make it look real nice okay so basically uh on this on this job we're going to do a bunch of the accessories on this jeep so we're going to hit the whole uh we're going to rhino the whole winch bumper and uh, make it solid we've got the fenders loose on it all these fenders are going to get prepped and sprayed out with rhino lining the uh Guards for the, the rock guards for the side are going to get completely sprayed with rhino lining also. There's another fender. It's what it looks like with all this stuff off of the vehicle, in case you ever wondered. It's stripped down and getting ready to go. Back here, the spare tire carrier. These are all spots that are kind of prone to rusting when these Jeeps are going through the mud and the water. This tire carrier will get completely redone also. And the fender's on this side too, of course. So all this will get redone, and then, like he said, the other thing that's prone to getting rusted is these areas. You can already see it here on this one. These lights that were previously installed on here, you see where you're starting to get a little bit of wear here. Um, when we rhino line those, uh, they will never do that again. We won't have to worry about that anymore. So those will be solid for a good long time. Thank you, Justin. I appreciate it. I'm going to get out of your way, and we're going to keep on rolling here. All right, brother. We're going to head over here to the upholstery department. I know Mike's got some leather work going on, a uh, pretty standard leather job, another one this week. We do several of these every week. i uh, got a cat skin kit going on to a 250, it looks like here. So I'm going to switch around and talk to Mike for a minute. Hey, Mike, you got Facebook Live. Tell them what you got going on on this kit. How's it going, Facebook Live? we got an F350 Super Duty, and we're taking the old gray leather off and doing a custom leather kit with the contrast stitching. Very nice. And we also had the uh, front cover seats embroidered with the Lariat logo. These came out really nice. Okay, so we converted it from gray leather to black leather, and we had the Lariat monogram done on it, or embroidery done on it. Looks really good. That's nice. So it'll match, it's still got that touch of gray to match the interior of the truck and the trim and everything. So it looks more factory, but a really nice, slick, uh, rich black leather kit. And we're gonna, we're pulling all the original gray leather out. That's gonna go into another vehicle of theirs. Uh, so it'll get reused. And this is a really nice cat skin kit. You guys know we do a ton of these, obviously. Um, what happens on these also, something interesting, I'll go over real quick because I, I saw it come through on this one. So that's the factory Lariat logo. And we're gonna replicate that exactly. And these seat buns, what happens, these seat buns start to wear out on these with the foam. Um, we steam the seat buns to try to bring them back to life, but some of them get eroded so bad they won't come back to life. So on this one, we've got a factory Ford bun going back in. This is what it looks like underneath that seat that I just showed you. 
So it's a brand new bun. Sometimes it's cheaper, it's more cost effective to go ahead and just replace that whole bun while we're at it anyway. You're not paying any more for, you know, for labor because we're already in there, but, uh, but it allows it when it's done, it, it fits up brand new. It's not sagging like this one currently is. We can fix a lot of small things on them, but again, sometimes it's just not worth it. It's not worth the time um, invested when you could just replace it, move on. So this truck's gonna look real tight when it's done. Um, should come out really good as always. And uh, let's go on over here to Judy real quick. See what Judy's got going on. One of the, the Facebook favorites here. She's always got something cool going on. So she's got the steamer running over here. Uh, this is the old, uh, or the bass boat that we're working on. Judy, I got Facebook Live here. Why don't you tell them what you're doing? Right now I'm steaming up the foam to kind of puff it back up and get some of the creases out of it. If you look real close, you can see that it actually swells it back up. Let me get down to a corner here so it'll show it real nice. You can just kind of see it slowly growing and coming back out to life. Yep. So the steam rejuvenates this old this old uh, foam, even though it's compressed from sitting on the boat for so long and being wrapped up in that old vinyl. As the vinyl shrinks, it, it compresses that foam. Well, we go hit it back with steam again, and the steam brings back, it opens up the cells in the foam again and, uh, and brings it back to life again. So this is what she does first to make sure that everything's back to normal and whatever doesn't come back, she can repair it at that point. Um, but this one should come back pretty good. We should be all set with it. Yeah, this one's going to need a little, little repairs. Okay. The uh, headrest has the foam is damaged here, so I'll cut out this section here and replace it with new foam and make it look like new. Okay. So that headrest is identical to what's happened here. The top of it split open, yeah. and it's completely failed here. Yeah. And uh, this is what this is what the headrest looks like, and it shouldn't. So we'll cut that piece out, the bad pieces. We'll put a whole new piece on there and, uh, and then recover it with the new stuff. Why don't you show them what you've, what you've sewn on this one? I'm excited about this one because the this color combination is beautiful. This is the center section of the seat bottom. Okay. And I take it all apart and use all the old pieces to make patterns okay. for the new pieces. And then I'm just finishing off the last two covers of that right here. So all these pieces are numbered and that's how you remember where they all go back together, correctly? Yes, it is. Okay. These are the poles that hold it into place, so I'm just going to put these on and get a good shot of that. There you go. So she's putting a, a stitch onto this one now. Anyway, she's sewing up. She's sewing up the piece here. That was kind of a live quick shot. One of these days, I'll, I'll grab her while she's, she's pretty quick, so I'd never really catch her very often, but I'll catch her where she's, she's sewing up uh, a big, long piece so you can see. It's kind of cool watching all this go together and these patterns go together. Um, this is some of the stuff that she's got sewn up. We sew it up. It all kind of gets sewn up inside out, and then it gets flipped around, um, and that's what you see. Those are your inside stitches when it's all said and done. This is over here that are already done. Okay, great. This is Show us what you got. The seat bottom, the inside it. Oh, the that's coming out good. <laughs> with the welt cord and everything. Beautiful. And then this is one of the backrest covers. It goes onto the backrest. Oh, nice. That color contrast and is money. And the headrest money. down over the top of that. And it'll wow. Be the red. Oh, that's yeah. coming out so good. This is the headrest cover here. So that's the blue and red headrest cover that's going to go on. She's got the piping all made for it and the headrest. All that contrast is going to be so nice when it's done. So this is what we were showing you from that old roached out seat to where we're heading to now. You guys wanted to see some progression as we go along, so I'm showing it to you. You're getting to see a really cool piece as it, as it comes out. And again, this is what we talked about before, the really nice different contrasting textures also. It's not just about the color, but the texture. Look at the texture that's in that piping versus what's in that gray versus what's in that blue. That's pretty cool stuff there. Looks beautiful. Keep up the good work, Judy. I'm gonna get out of your way. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Head over here to uh, Angel real quick in the tent department. Uh, yes, Brennan Bauer, that is for a boat. That's a uh, that's a, an older fishing boat. Um, nice fishing boat, a high-end fishing boat. Um, and that's what all this interior is that she's redoing. That's a great question, I'm sorry. Should have gone over that, but that's what all these pieces are out of, is a boat. Over here, we're gonna come see uh, Angel real quick. Angel Facebook Live. Sorry hey, to bother you. How you doing? 
So what you got going on on this one? Uh, well, we actually uh, doing uh, thinning the two front windows to match the back on the factory uh, stained glass. Stained glass, okay. And um, we just uh, going with a uh, color stable twenty to match the the back. 3M color stable. Okay, so why don't you show them real quick? Can you drop one of these back windows? It's a good opportunity to show uh, people what the difference between factory stained glass and sure. and uh, non stained glass is. So from the factory, when these vehicles come out, you know the fallacy is that the factory tinted my back windows, quote unquote. The factory doesn't tint any windows. They don't know where these vehicles are going. So there are different laws in in uh, in every state, basically for window film. But what they can do the same for all vehicles is like these SUVs, they do this stained glass on it. This is actually a stained glass. And how we know is there's no edge on this glass at all, right? There's no edge on the film anyway. But when we lay window film, there'll be a very small edge on there. You can tell the difference. You can feel it with your finger, but this is stained glass. See if he, he just laid this, but he dropped it a little bit and you can see the edge on there. So see, see where the glass goes versus where the edge of the film is. You're not gonna see that on on the back windows. So that's how you can tell if, the, if, if you really do have film on the back windows or if it's a stained glass. Now when we talk about stained glass on back windows, um, again the fallacy is that I don't need to do anything to the back because it's already done from the factory. Well, stained glass is kind of like a beer bottle. If you were to break it, it's that color all the way through. Um, and it's like cheap set of sunglasses basically. It doesn't block any UV at all. It doesn't block any heat at all. It's more for cosmetic and to cut down glare coming in the vehicle. Now remember, typically the number one reason why a customer would tint their windows on their car is in Florida anyway, is to cut down on heat. So tinting just the two front windows while it does work, a lot of people come back and go, well, why is it so cool in the back in the front of the vehicle when I put my hand up to it, sun shining in, but when in the back I can feel the difference. It's very hot back there when I put my hand. My kid's still getting a sunburn. Um, you know, there's a lot of heat coming in. Well, the difference obviously is you have stained glass in the back. So until we put film on it, it's not going to do any good for you. It's just going to cut down on glare and that's it. Um, so we do suggest to our customers to get the full vehicle film, you know, put on it. If you're not, if you don't want to go darker, that's absolutely fine. We have film crystalline 90 that's virtually clear. Um, and that film will allow you to go ahead and lay over top of this without seeing any difference in darkness. Um, it'll be the same color, but now you'll block 99% of UV. You'll cut down on, man, at least 40% of heat. Um, that makes the big difference on the vehicle. So although we can just do the two fronts, if that's good enough for you, no problem. We do a ton of that. Uh, we do suggest doing the entire vehicle. Here's a computer cut pieces for the front windows that are already done. And this thing's rocking. All right. Thank you, Angel. I appreciate it. I'm going to head up front. I believe we have some film going on out front. Excuse me for a second here. So out front, I want to go over. We've got some film being laid by our sister company, M3 Home 10 of Tampa Bay. On the front windows of the shop, we have film on the inside of these windows, but a lot of sun comes in through these windows. So we end up, um, we've, we've got a need this year to go ahead and lay exterior film also. So what the installer's laying right now, Donna's out here and she's laying on an exterior prestige 40% on this window. And they've already, I believe they've done the other side already, correct? Okay, so this side is already done and Donna's laying it on this one. So this is again our sister company, M3 Home 10 of Tampa Bay, putting film on the front of the store. Uh, before they get back to the rest of their regularly scheduled jobs for the day for that company. And this film is going to block a massive amount of heat. If you come into the store, we can show you a demo. Um, you can see the difference in light. There's film on the inside of that top window, but it doesn't have the film on the outside of it yet. This is film on the inside, and now she's laying the film on the outside. So you can see the obvious differences in darkness. Looks great, but the heat blockage we're going to get now from covering the inside and the outside of these windows is huge. You can also see the contrast difference over here. This window, these two big windows is where all the heat comes in the front of the showroom. Those of you who have been here in the morning know that. But when you look over here, you can see these already have the film inside now. So it's pretty nice. You're going to feel a massive difference. You see the sun coming in here. We have film on the inside, so it doesn't fade any of the equipment or boxes or anything that we have in here, or the floors, but it doesn't block enough heat. This is an extreme case. Um, and we do a lot of the same type work to these windows uh, for condos and, and places on the water and things like that. And it makes a very big difference. 
So just wanted to show that to you real quick, a rare opportunity to see what the other company does. And if you've got any questions about home or commercial window film, give us a shout and uh, we can talk to you about those options with our other company. Um, I'm going to go live also for M3, so make sure you check that out too. We are tuning in earlier in the week this week. Let's change it up a little bit for you. We still got some cool projects going out here. We'll, we'll uh, keep you informed on what's going on and on Friday. And we'll talk to you guys real soon. Have a great rest of the day and hit us up with any questions that you have. Get MCOR Automotive, Lutes, Florida, 813-362-5454.